groundwater sites, we have Kelgate, we have one at Cottingham, Millhouse Woods Lane, or the end of there, and we have one at Dunswell. This site by itself will supply up to 30 million litres of water a day with the pumps that we have. The licence is actually up to about 45. Right, so spring hit. As in it, when I walked around or looked at a map, or maybe your own street, Spring Hill, Springway Avenue, Spring Hill Primary School. What do you think that means? It's all the Exactly. Um, it's actually you to not realise. So the site in itself, how did it come about? Well, in the early 1800s, water was brought in, there were a number of springs around the area, there was water brought in from the river and it was in open ditches and utilised as best as possible. Without the sanitation, without the disinfection of drinking water, it is easy spread. We had two cholera outbreaks and the situation needed some action. In step, the hero of the day, William Warden. Now, William Warden was a local man, a plumber and a glazer, I'm told, who was born around about 1820, near Allenby. Now, he came up with the idea that he could abstract water out of the ground, out of the chalk, by drilling down. And he put that proposal to the local government, and they refused to pay for it. But he did it anyway. He funded it himself. And he dug down on this site 250 feet and from that well he produced around about 22 million litres of water every day he got out of this site. And when all this water was feeding the uh, good people of Hull, he asked for payment. £500 please. No. Finished up taking them to court. Now over the years this site was expanded. About 22 million litres of water every day. It was expanded from that to 25 uh, million litres of water every day with the introduction of Cornish Beam Engine. Now, the original Springhead site, the building itself, the, the original part of the building is actually from the front door, from the southeast corner, going all the way along the south side. This Cornish Beam Engine was added in the late 1860s. Okay. Um, Further wells were dug, so underneath your feet as you stand, yes we've got some checker plate in here, I can't take you down there but I can assure you around this chamber there's a central diameter and as wide as the walls, all bar maybe six inch either side, is a well. It's about 20 metres deep. Now the original source of water was from a 250 foot sort of well outside the building and now we found we could get it from 20 meters deep on a hand dug well. Now the reason for that is we started to understand more about the groundwater situation in Hull and the Hull aquifer across the city and we have addicts now that go from this site and spread west for a significant distance which you'll notice on any sort of google map and if you have a look out the back gate you'll see a grassed area that keeps going between the housing estates either side. It goes for at least a mile in that distance and there is another one that goes to the east. Now the east navy has been capped off now, but the west navy is entirely in use and that's why we have to protect the ground above it and look after it. The water comes down these attic tunnels now, collects in this 20 metre well. There's actually one just outside the building, this is the second one. The interconnecting pipes take it to another well in the um, current pump house, but this water coming in from all over. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, they constructed a brick attic system underground, 20 metres underground, and stretching for miles. That feat of engineering is unbelievable.
Uh, so what you've got is you've got the red corrugated jump down that end, which is the pump end. Uh, so you've got a pump end that end. Uh, this end is the, the steam cylinder. Uh, it's a 90 inch steam cylinder. Uh, it works off a plug rod system. They catch on to the, uh, the tappets. Uh, so you've got, uh, you've got three tappets which control each of the, uh, the valves on the, uh, the steam cylinder. You've got the steam inlet valve, the equilibrium valve and the exhaust valve. Uh, the tap is run across arbors, which are used to uh, move the, uh, the mechanisms uh, and it uses quadrants as well on the sides uh, to latch in uh, for each of the, uh, the strokes for the pump.